Good afternoon. My name is Albert Kahn. I serve as the legal director for CARE New York, the Council on American Islamic Relations. I'm here to say that New York must take immediate action to make sure our courthouses remain open to all. And I applaud Speaker Mark Viverito, Chairman Lanzman, and Chairman Manchaca for calling for action on this vital matter. Today, my oral remarks are an excerpt of the longer written statement we have submitted into the record. ISIS courthouse arrests are not merely unjust, they may actually be unconstitutional. And speaking just hours before the resumption of President Trump's Muslim ban, it is quite obvious why this is of special concern for New York's Muslim community. As the Supreme Court has repeatedly stated, the Tenth Amendment prohibits the federal government from commandeering any state to enforce federal laws or regulatory programs. To put it simply, ICE cannot force New York to do its job. Just as the federal government cannot compel the NYPD to conduct immigration raids, and just as it cannot compel this council to enact immigration bans, it cannot transform our courts and prosecutors into instrumentalities of immigration enforcement. The constitutional concerns are clearest when ICE arrests those who have been subpoenaed by prosecutors, arresting New Yorkers who have been compelled by our state to be present at a time and place where ICE can detain them. This tactic turns executive branch officials into an indispensable component of ICE's in immigration enforcement strategy. Such a co-option of state subpoena power seriously compromises the integrity of our court system, a centuries-old experiment with federalism. Congress has not authorized such a tactic. Our Constitution forbids it, and so our state must now put an end to these arrests. ICE's conduct also raises serious issues of public accountability. Immigration enforcement in state courthouses by a federal agency with a history of impersonating state and municipal police forces creates a clear impression of state cooperation with the federal immigration program. Our Constitution prohibits federal programs that mislead the public in this way, since they disrupt democratic accountability. The Tenth Amendment forbids programs like this which wrongly lead the public to hold state officials culpable for decisions of federal authorities. ICE's transformation of state courthouses into traps for undocumented immigrants thus places state officials into a situation where the maintenance of a core state function implicitly compels them to submit to cooperation with the federal program. ICE's decision to disregard constitutional boundaries and undermine the state judicial system simply cannot be tolerated. In light of the foregoing, we urge the city and state officials to do everything in their power to block ICE enforcement in New York's courthouses. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to address these urgent issues, and I look forward to working with the Council to safeguard the rights of all Muslim New Yorkers and all immigrant New Yorkers in the months and years to come. I should have had you go first. You set a good example. <laughs> no pressure, please. I'll do my best to follow suit. Good afternoon, Chairman Lansman, Chairman Mnchaka. My name is Michael Snow. I'm here as the Assistant Director of the Anti-Defamation League in New York. Since 1913, the mission of the Anti-Defamation League has been to stop the defamation of the Jewish people and to secure justice and fair treatment for all. We're dedicated to combating anti-Semitism, prejudice, bigotry of all kinds, as well as defending democratic ideals and civil rights. ADL has also historically fought for just and humane immigration policies. We also have vast experience dealing with law enforcement. We're the largest non-governmental trainer of law enforcement, and we've trained over 100,000 federal, state, and local law enforcement personnel in just the past 10 years on hate crimes, extremism, terrorism, ethics, and core values. This puts us in a unique place to address the relationship between law enforcement and the community, and it's also why we're here today to express our deep concern about ICE enforcement in New York City courts stemming from the current administration's aggressive deportation policy, which has led to this escalation. Members of the community, regardless of immigration or citizenship status, need to be able to contact local police and authorities and access our justice system without fear of deportation. We're concerned that increased ICE activity in courthouses will deny vulnerable victims and individuals access to justice as they're deterred from contacting authorities and using the justice system when needed, such as in the event of a hate crime. ICE's pursuit of domestic violence victims, sexual assault, hate crimes in courts, uh, risks sending the message to other victims that they too might be at risk of deportation if they come forward, or even witnesses or anyone using the judicial system. 
Crime increases when members of the community are afraid to turn to police and the justice system for protection, and perpetrators feel emboldened and unafraid of consequences. This is why we also feel that courthouses should be treated as sensitive areas akin to houses of worship and schools. We urge the New York City Council to ask the chief judge and chief administrative judge to take steps to bar ICE enforcement actions at New York State courthouses and preserve equal access to our justice system. As has been said, I think this is going to take a multi-pronged approach. Just this week, we hosted a training for staff members of Latin American consulates on hate crimes and bringing them together with the Hate Crimes Task Force of the NYPD. I encourage you to consider our written testimony, which expands upon these issues, and I thank you very much for your consideration and the time. Very good. Um, now, CARE and ADL, you're both national organizations. Are you aware of other jurisdictions that are uh, maybe being more aggressive in limiting ICE's access to, to the courts? Any models out there or any jurisdictions that in some way, shape, or form are doing something that we could bring into New York? It's a good question. I can say that as uh, the local or the New York chapter of a national organization, we're also in touch with colleagues who can share with us what they're seeing in their parts of the country. And in our written testimony, it, we mention the effect this has had in places like Los Angeles, Boston, and Miami, where we are seeing reported decrease in reporting of cases of sexual assault and domestic violence. I understand. Violence. The question is, are you aware of any other jurisdictions, any other court systems <clears throat> that are restricting ICE's ability in some way that we can see what they're doing and, and maybe have New York do that? And if the answer is no, that's okay, but I, since you're both representatives of national organizations, I thought you might know. So I actually reached out to my colleagues nationwide about this, and so far we have found a lot of symbolic actions taken against ICE enforcement, but we have yet to find uh, jurisdictions that have been willing to take a more concrete stance. And we really think there's an incredible opportunity here for New York to lead the way by taking a more aggressive posture. And I will say, as far as the Tenth Amendment argument, it's something that New York led the way on in the past. We set case law in 1992, went to the Supreme Court as a way to vindicate our state interest. I think there is an opening for us to really be a what model. It, just help us out. What are you referring to there? Uh, it was a case that dealt with a regulatory program created by the federal government regarding radioactive waste disposal. It was a highly technical issue, but the question, uh, the core question was whether the state could be compelled to facilitate the, uh, with a federal program. And there the court took a very strong line in favor of New York's rights to refuse to take part in that federal program. And here it's different. It is a different fact pattern, but I think by going after the co-option of the subpoena power as a quasi-executive uh, governmental function, there is case law that would actually support um, either the Attorney General taking a, uh, proactive litigation or as a defensive strategy to protect the OCA if they chose to implement a more restrictive program. Councilman, I would just say one other thing. Um, as you heard the speaker say uh, at, this, at the press conference outside last Thursday, um, New York should be in the vanguard and doing more to protect its and not following the lead. We should be, uh, 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 if we are truly a state uh, interested in protecting our immigrant residents, we should, we, we should be taking the initiative and lead on this. Amen.